Okay, I'll come back, students. And uh, this lesson is going to cover the experiments on chemical equilibria. As I told you in our first recording, that uh, we shall be looking at experiments. So, experiments on chemical equilibrium. On chemical equilibrium. Uh, we have already looked at uh, what chemical equilibrium is, and uh, we looked at the derivation of the relationship between the equilibrium constant Kc and pressure equilibrium constant Kp. And uh, then I told you that in our next recording is all about the experiments, from which experiments we can uh, get the gist of what we are supposed to be doing in the case you're given a certain question for you to calculate. So uh, the full details behind these experiments is to exploit how the experiments on chemical equilibria are carried out. And then basically we shall see how results are treated once they are obtained. We are going to look at different categories of experiments, but uh, our main reason behind all this is to understand how we come up with the procedure of calculation. And uh, on the other hand, still uh, an experiment can be examined. They may, they may examine or they may bring uh, a question which is all about the experiment to determine maybe equilibrium constant for a certain reaction. Okay, so uh, I'm going to begin with uh, I'm going to begin with the one um, I'm going to begin with experiment uh, to determine experiment to determine the equilibrium constant the equilibrium constant for dissociation, for the dissociation of hydrogen iodide, of hydrogen iodide, iodide to hydrogen, and iodine, of course, if we say dissociation of hydrogen iodide, it means that hydrogen iodide is being dissociated, or let's say is being decomposed from the other independent products of hydrogen and the iodine. So what we really uh, are interested in, we want to see how the procedure uh, follows, okay? So what we do first of all, we need to have a known amount of hydrogen iodide because it's the one which is going to be dissociating. So we shall need hydrogen iodide, okay? Where we are going to be sure of the amount or what we may call the number of moles. Then still, uh, we shall see that this hydrogen iodide will be keep, kept in a thermostat at a certain temperature until the equilibrium is established. So the main idea is, uh, the first procedure of ours would be a known amount of hydrogen iodide. Maybe let's call it any moles, whereby any moles is the amount of hydrogen iodide is put is put in a glass sealed tube, or I can say in a glass bulb of a fixed volume of a fixed volume, which volume I can let be V decimeters cubed and kept and kept in a thermostat, kept in a, 
a thermostat at a certain temperature, which I can specify to be 450 at a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius. And we keep it there until the equilibrium is established. Until equilibrium is established or until equilibrium is reached. Now, that is the first procedure. Then it means that at equilibrium, if you had kept hydrogen iodide in a, in a thermostat at equilibrium, it will have dissociated to form the hydrogen and the iodine. So what we do at equilibrium, we remove that bulb and we rapidly cool it to stop the reaction. Okay, so uh, we shall say that at equilibrium, at equilibrium, uh, the bulb, the bulb is removed. The bulb is removed and rapidly cooled, removed and rapidly cooled. Okay, why do we cool it? To stop to stop the reaction, to stop the reaction, right? And also to fix the equilibrium such that that equilibrium doesn't adjust such that the equilibrium doesn't adjust itself and adjust itself okay to the equilibrium value to the equilibrium value the equilibrium value at a lower temperature at a lower temperature because remember as you're cooling you're reducing the temperature meaning that if the reaction is not stopped uh the, the equilibrium will shift itself to the value that is different from what you expect at equilibrium. So to avoid that, after removing the bulb, we rapidly cool it so that the reaction is stopped. Now, then what we do, we break the glass tube. So that tube is then broken. The tube is a, a broken under aqueous potassium iodide under aqueous potassium iodide. So you need to know the reason as to why we break the tube under aqueous potassium iodide. We do so, so that we dissolve the iodine present at equilibrium. Because remember at equilibrium we form hydrogen and the Iodine. So implying that when the tube is broken under potassium iodide, the iodide ions are going to dissolve. Okay, We're going to dissolve the iodine. So what do we do? The tube is broken under aqueous potassium iodide in order to dissolve, in order to dissolve uh, the iodine present, the iodine present at equilibrium. If I proceed, these experiments are the ones that will guide you uh, uh, in knowing how to calculate. So the moment we say an experiment to determine something, it means that the information behind that experiment is enough to get us understand all the logic behind this calculation. So now we are saying that the tube is broken under aqueous potassium iodide to dissolve the iodine present Okay, to dissolve the iodine present at equilibrium. Now, that iodine present at equilibrium is titrated with the standard D solution of sodium thiosulfate, and specifically, we use the starch indicator. Why do we titrate against standard sodium thiosulfate solution? 
Since the sodium trisulfate solution concentration is known, it means that by using the mole ratio and other details, we can get the moles of iodine. And after getting the moles of iodine, it is very easy now to fit in our equation and we get the rest of the uh, information that is required for us to calculate. So now we shall say that the resultant mixture, the resultant mixture, is titrated against standard solution of sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate using starch indicator using starch indicate after titrating that it means that we can get the amount of iodine there we need to know the equation we are titrating iodine with the thiosulfate ions from sodium thiosulfate we shall form iodide ions and uh, tetrathionate ions s for o6 to minus so here we can get the amount of iodine. So the amount of iodine at equilibrium, of iodine at equilibrium is obtained. Now we want to see how we can treat the results that we've gotten in order to come up with uh, what KC is equal to the equilibrium constant Kc. Now, to have a recap in that, we are saying that a known amount of hydrogen iodide, meaning you should be knowing what hydrogen iodide is going to dissociate. So we have called it any moles. We put it in a glass bulb with a fixed volume of V decimeter tube. So you have the amount of hydrogen iodide and you have the volume of the vessel. Then we keep it in a thermostat at a temperature of 450 until equilibrium is established. Now, at equilibrium, that is because in the first video, we were seeing that at, it is at equilibrium that uh, products and reactants have the same rate, okay? The rate of formation of reactant, or rather the rate of formation of products and the rate of uh, 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 pro uh, reactants being taken up is equal. So it is at equilibrium. Equilibrium comes from the word equal, 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 equilibrium. So we are talking about equal, equality. Equality has been established between products and reactants. So now it is at equilibrium that we have already formed the hydrogen iodide and rather the hydrogen and iodine. And still we are having some hydrogen iodide. So break the bulb, first remove the bulb at equilibrium. Cool to do what? To stop the reaction. And it also fix equilibrium so that it does not adjust itself to the value at a lower temperature. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we break the tube under aqueous potassium iodide. Reason to dissolve the iodine that is present at equilibrium. So at equilibrium, we've gotten some iodine, which we titrate. Though we are saying that the resultant mixture, but the resultant mixture is also containing that iodine, which is titrated against standard solution of sodium thiosulfate using starch indicator. So you are having iodine, ion, iodine solution, plus thiosulfate ions to form iodide ions and tetrathionate ions. Then the amount of iodine present at equilibrium can be obtained. After getting the amount of iodine, we can go ahead to see how these results can be treated. Let's see the treatment of the results. Treatment, treatment of results. Okay, now for us to treat results, um, we've already seen that the total volume of the bulb, total volume of bulb is equals to V decimeters cubed and uh, <clears throat> Number of moles
of hydrogen iodide or hydrogen iodide that was heated. We say that it is equals to N moles, but since it is dissociating, the hydrogen iodide is dissociating, we need the degree of dissociation. So degree of dissociation of hydrogen iodide is equals to alpha. Now, from here we can write equation, which equation can guide us. So we shall have two hydrogen iodide, it's a gas, establishes equilibrium or reverse, reverse reforms hydrogen gas plus iodine gas. I have involved the alpha, not because of any other reason, because of dissociation. If it is dissociating, we need the degree of dissociation. But if it were these ones, as we shall see, if it were hydrogen reacting with iodine from hydrogen iodide, we wouldn't need this because this one comes in if and only if the reaction involves dissociation. So then from here, we need initial moles. And this is the standard procedure of calculation. So initial moles, hydrogen iodide, we say that there were any moles. But initially, we don't have hydrogen, we don't have iodine initial. It means that the reaction has not taken place. Now, from here, we need moles dissociated. Moles dissociated or formed. The number of moles that are dissociated or formed. Uh, this one, it will be any alpha. We get those moles, we multiply by the degree of dissociation. But since the mole ratio is two to one to one, it means that these ones will be any alpha out of two. And this one will also be n alpha out of two. It would be just n alpha if there wasn't a two here. But the fact that on the hydrogen that there is a two now, and here is one, one to mean that the ratio will be one, or rather two to one to one, which brings in the a half here. Now, moles at equilibrium is what we follow there. Moles at equilibrium, write the whole word, moles at equilibrium. To get moles at equilibrium, we get initial moles. We get initial moles minus the moles that either dissociated or were formed. So we shall have N minus N alpha, but this one will keep N alpha over two. Don't say negative. I know you would have gotten zero minus this and you get negative, but we don't have negative moles in this case. So it is N alpha over two, also here it is n alpha over two. Then now, these are moles at equilibrium, but we need the concentration at equilibrium since we're interested in the case C. So the concentration at equilibrium, concentration at equilibrium would be here, you see n is common, factorize it, factorize it out. So we shall have one minus alpha over V. When we get number of moles and we divide by the volume, we get concentration. So this is going to be n alpha over two divided by volume, which is two V. Even here we shall have n alpha over two V. Now from here, after getting the concentration at equilibrium, now we can easily compute our Kc value. So our Kc is equal to the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of iodine, because we say that it is the product of the molar concentration of the products raised with the appropriate power. Since I have one one here, I will take it like this, divided by the concentration, molar concentration of the reactant. So it will be hydrogen iodide, everything to the power two because of this two here. Substitute. What is the concentration of hydrogen? What is the concentration of iodine at equilibrium? So we have, uh, any alpha over two V, since they are the same, I will just square and I divide by hydrogen iodide concentration squared. So it will be N one minus alpha over V, then everything squared. So when you look at this, uh, this is going to be Mm, N squared, alpha squared, 
over 4v squared. If we are to do it mathematically, then this is going to be n squared, 1 minus alpha squared, everything is over v squared. Uh, if you check the reciprocal, we shall have n squared alpha squared over 4v squared times v squared over n squared, 1 minus alpha squared. n squared and n squared will go. Uh, v squared will go with v squared, right? So I am having alpha squared. So it would mean that my Kc, my Kc value is equal to alpha squared over one minus, there is a four down, so it is four into one minus alpha, then everything squared. So that is the, how we determine the KC of hydrogen, how your diluent is dissociating, meaning that in the case you were given a calculation, in case it was a real calculation and you're given values, the number of moles, everything, we would just be doing like this. We would follow the same procedures. So uh, allow me to take you to experiment now to determine the equilibrium constant for the reaction between hydrogen and iodine to form hydrogen iodide. What if the experiment is the other way around? So we shall have an um, experiment experiment to determine to determine the equilibrium constant the equilibrium constant for reaction for reaction between between hydrogen between hydrogen and the iodine at uh, form hydrogen iodine from hydrogen from hydrogen iodide. So uh, now this is the experiment, but it doesn't, it's not different from what we looked at, only that for this case now we are starting with the hydrogen reactor with iodine to form hydrogen iodide. So as we said, still, uh, now for this case, we are getting hydrogen, hydrogen is reacting with iodine to form hydrogen iodide. So in the case, in this case, it means that we are starting with the hydrogen and the iodine, we are going this side. So you should be knowing the concentration of this and concentration of this, all right? So let's say a known, a known amount of hydrogen, a known amount of hydrogen. This one is now should be known in order to form this. So a known amount of hydrogen, let me say A mods, the amount is a moles and a known amount of iodine and a, a known amount of iodine may be b moles all right b moles a put i'll put a put in a sealed i put in a sealed glass bulb I put in a sealed glass bulb, okay, of a fixed volume, of a fixed volume, of a fixed volume, uh, which I can say V decimeters cubed, kept, kept in a thermostat, kept in a, in a thermostat, okay, at a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius, or 450 degrees Celsius, and we do that until, we keep it until equilibrium is reached, until equilibrium is reached. Now, the first step is not different from the step we had 
when hydrogen iodide was dissociating. Only that the difference here is that we are beginning with the known hydrogen and known iodine. But in both cases, we put in a glass tube or a glass bulb, and we keep in a thermostat <clears throat> at a certain temperature until equilibrium is reached. At equilibrium, it means that you formed hydrogen <clears throat> iodide. Now, still, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, the bulb is removed. The bulb is removed. Okay. Uh -huh. Rapidly cooled after removing it. We rapidly cool it uh, to do what? To stop the reaction. To do that to stop the reaction. Uh, to stop the reaction. And still to fix the equilibrium. The equilibrium, all right? Uh, the equilibrium such that such that the equilibrium doesn't adjust so that the equilibrium the equilibrium does not adjust does not adjust itself does not adjust itself uh, to the equilibrium value to the equilibrium value all right the equilibrium value at a lower temperature at a lower temperature same steps now after that the tube we, is broken the tube is then broken uh, the tube is then broken and uh, we break it under aqueous potassium iodide solution aqueous solution of potassium iodide okay potassium iodide uh-huh potassium iodide to do what basically to dissolve to dissolve iodine present to dissolve the iodine present at equilibrium interesting mm. now after this it means that here after iodine being dissolved, okay, the iodine has been dissolved. Now we have iodine solution, which can be treated against standard solution of sodium tiosulfate using such indicator in order to obtain the concentration of iodine or the amount of iodine present at equilibrium. So I'm going to say that the equilibrium, um, yeah, the resultant mixture, the resultant mixture is then titrated is then titrated uh, with uh, a standard solution with a standard solution of sodium theosulfate of sodium theosulfate of sodium theosulfate okay using such indicate it means that if you have standard sodium tiosulfate by getting its moles you can as well get the moles of uh, iodine and thus getting the moles uh, the, the amount of iodine because if you have iodine aqueous plus tiosulfate ions tiosulfate ions you form uh, iodide ions uh, plus the tetrathionate ions. Now, here you can get the amount of iodine present at equilibrium. So, the amount of iodine present at equilibrium, present at equilibrium, present at equilibrium, uh, is obtained is obtained so this one now can help us treat the results and we get the value of kc okay let's see um it means that total volume total volume of the bulb 
and it doesn't take away that there's a lot of software that can happen to the minimum of the bulb is equal to V decimeters cubed. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we can let the number of moles uh, moles of uh, iodine converted to hydrogen iodide to hydrogen iodide i can let it to be x moles then it means that moles of hydrogen iodide formed moles of hydrogen iodide formed will be twice x simply because uh, when you look at the equation, we have one mole of hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen uh, iodine to give us two moles of hydrogen iodide, meaning that if the moles of iodine are x, then the moles of hydrogen iodide will be twice x. How? Let's see. Um, from the equation, we have hydrogen, now gas, plus iodine, still gas, to give us uh, it must be reversible. It must be reversible to give us hydrogen iodide gas. So initially, initially, the initial moles of hydrogen were A and the moles of, hydro of iodine were B, but initially we don't have hydrogen iodide. So moles reacted. Moles reacted or formed. We say that iodine is X. And since the mole ratio is even one to one, also here will be X, but for hydrogen iodide will be twice X. And after forming, here we don't need the dissociation, degree of dissociation, because hydrogen and iodine are reacting directly to form hydrogen iodide. The other time we use the degree of dissociation simply because uh, simply because the hydrogen iodide was dissociating so here we can get moles at equilibrium moles at equilibrium it means we shall have a minus x those are initial moles minus moles formed rather moles reacted then we shall have b minus x and then we shall have 2x but because we have volume and the number of moles or volume gives us concentration. We can go ahead to look for concentration at equilibrium. Concentration at equilibrium. Concentration at equilibrium, we shall be dividing by volume. So it is A minus X over volume, B minus X over volume. And this is two X over volume. So now, from our expression of KC, now we can get the values from KC. Now from KC is equal to concentration. Now for this case, we shall begin with hydrogen iodide. And since we are having a two here, it will be concentration of hydrogen iodide raised to the power two over concentration of the reactant. So we have hydrogen raised to the power one times iodine raised to the power one. So looking at all these, um, well now uh, we can substitute uh, for hydrogen iodide, we have two X. So allow me say two X over V, two X over V, then squared over concentration of hydrogen. Concentration of hydrogen is A minus X over V, all right, then times B minus X, everything is over V. Um, this is going to be equal to four X squared. If you expand that for X squared over V squared divided by uh, A minus X, uh, B minus X over, this is V squared. 
All right, so now you realize that after taking the reciprocal uh, value of kc will be equal to the v's will cancel, so we shall have four x squared over a minus x times b minus x. And these are the trends that we shall be following when we are calculating the values, as you can see. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, very many experiments. Let's do the one of esterification, and uh, I will assume that those ones will be enough. Uh, the ones of uh, esterification may be somehow different from this, especially uh, the procedures, but the other way of doing the things is the same. So let's look at uh, experiment to determine the equilibrium constant for the esterification reaction between ethanoic acid and the ethanol. Okay, so we are looking at experiment. This was examined in some past paper, either 2010, 9 or 8 or 11, from 2008 to 11 there. You can try checking and see, you find this experiment there taking over eight marks, if not 10 or nine. Experiment to, to determine the equilibrium constant, the equilibrium constant for esterification. For esterification reaction uh, between ethanoic acid between ethanoic acid and the ethanol ethanoic acid and the ethanol so here we have in ethanoic acid and the and ethanol. So what we do, since we are having this ethanoic acid and ethanol to give us an ester, it means that we are starting with ethanoic acid and, e, and ethanol. So we need to be knowing the number of moles of ethanoic acid. We need to be knowing the number of moles of ethanol. And then we put them together in a sealed glass tube. So the first procedure would be unknown amount of ethanoic acid, maybe you can call it a moles, is mixed with is mixed with the unknown amount of ethanol can say B moles. Right, um, and put and put in a, a sealed glass tube. Mm -hmm. Then that is a common procedure. Now, in this case, uh, the sealed tube and its contents, what we've added, uh, is left in a water bath around seven to 10 hours. So I seal the tube and its contents. Is left in a water bath at 60 degrees Celsius for for seven hours or any 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 hours between seven and ten can work then now you break the tube so the tube is broken uh, in cold water now, not under potassium iodide. You only use potassium iodide when the reaction is happening 
iodine so that the iodine dissolves. So we break it in cold water and, and uh, the solution and the solution uh, is titrated and this is the solution is titrated with uh, with a standard with a standard with a standard solution the standard solution of sodium hydroxide of sodium hydroxide uh, using phenolphthalein phenolphthalein indicator now in this case after breaking the tube we titrate the resultant solution with sodium hydroxide it means that the ethanoic acid is the one the acid is the one that will dissolve that will react with an alkali to form a solid to form a salt and water that is sodium ethanoate and water so we shall say uh, ethanoic acid is the one that is reacting with sodium hydroxide to form sodium ethanoate and water mm -hmm. now in this case we can get the amount of ethanoic acid okay so uh, the amount of uh, ethanoic acid at equilibrium the amount of ethanoic acid at equilibrium those are x moles is obtained so i've called it to be x moles now it would mean that before we treat those results okay why well, i can let's treat treatment of results treatment so treatment of results because we already know the volume of the solution we can let volume of the solution to be equaling to v decimeters cubed that is the volume of the solution then we say that moles of ethanoic acid at equilibrium we say that it is equals to x all right it is equal to it is equal to x then it would mean that uh, moles of uh, ethanoic acid that reacted or that was converted to ester okay converted it to an ester and water will be the initial minus moles at equilibrium so since this is the case then it means that also uh, uh, we can now write the equation and put the information and we see so let's say that uh, ethanoic acid liquid plus ethanol liquid we form uh, ethyl ethanoid liquid plus water plus water liquid so initial moles shall begin with initial moles the initial moles of ethanoic acid were a why the initial moles of ethanol are B. But initially, we don't have ethanoic, we don't have an ester, ethyl ethanoid, and we don't have water initially. We have only this reactant. But moles that formed, moles formed or moles that reacted, 
we have said that uh, uh, we have said that uh, uh, modes of ethanoic acid that were formed or the modes that reacted is the, it will be a minus x and so the more reaction ratio is the same okay everything will be a minus x even here we shall have a minus x even here we shall have a minus x but at equilibrium we also need modes at equilibrium at equilibrium it will be a minus it will be a minus a minus x so if it is a minus a minus x then this one will be b minus it will be b minus a minus x and this one will be to keep a minus x and this one will also be a minus x so this is x and this is b minus a plus x i'm opening the brackets right then this is a, a minus x and still this is a minus x now from here we can get the concentration concentration we divide by the volume so it will be x over v b minus a plus x over v a minus x over v a minus x over v okay let me finalize so uh, here we can get our kc kc is the molar concentration of uh, ether ethanoid times the concentration of water over the concentration of ethanoic acid Time the concentration of ethanol. Uh huh. Concentration of ethyl ethanoid is uh, a minus x over v, a minus x over v. So this one will be a minus x over v squared because they are the same. So we are dividing by concentration of uh, ethanoic acid. So it is x over v times b minus a plus x over v. Well, um, now you realize that this one will be v squared, even this one will be v squared. So the v squared will cancel, and we shall have our kc as a minus x squared over v squared and v squared will cancel so we shall have x b minus a plus x that is our case so we shall be looking at how best you can uh, use these ideas to calculate and that is in our lesson three continue subscribing to my channel and let your fellows know about this learning platform so that we can get into the struggle together. I wish you all the best. See you in the third lesson.